Thank you for joining us on Journey to 600. Today, I'm going to be focusing on cardiopulm and specifically cardiac rehab. In cardiac rehab, there are three phases. The first phase being inpatient, the second phase being outpatient, and the third phase being on your own. In phase one, this occurs in the hospital and it is a gradual return to activity after your incident or your surgery. And while you're in the hospital, they monitor your vitals very heavily. They recommend a heart rate less than 120 beats per minute and uh, no more than an increase of 20 beats per minute during rest. Each surgery has a different expected discharge date, and it's important to note that sternal precautions last anywhere from 8 to 10 weeks. And signs and symptoms of exertion intolerance include persistent dyspnea, dizziness, angina pain, and sudden weight gain. Phase two is when the patient has been discharged from the hospital and now they are attending an outpatient cardiac rehab program that lasts 12 weeks and has a variety of different exercises such as aerobic training, strength training, and flexibility. It's important to note that resistance training starts at five weeks post MI and eight weeks post cabbage. But the question is, when do we hold or stop exercise? Here I've provided two different lists, when to hold exercise and when to stop exercise. Holding exercise is when their vitals are not cooperating or not within their standards that they need. So you hold exercise for the day, but there's some things you're not going to know. Like you, because they're in an outpatient setting, you're not going to know their ECG or their glucose because we don't test those things. But the other three, you would know if there was a difference. When to stop exercise, these are more serious things like ataxia, excessive fatigue, dyspnea, and uh, their systolic blood pressure dropping or increasing too much. So you might want to refer them back to their doctor and not do exercise until they've seen their doctor about these signs and symptoms that they're having. So I've included a picture of the big red physical rehab book. I pulled a lot of my information from their cardiac rehab section and I just wanted to include the purpose of phase one mainly is that you are a session of assessing a patient's hemodynamic response to activity as well as increasing their independence. As PTs in acute care, you want to promote early ambulation. Phase two is outpatient, and phase three I didn't even include because you're on your own. You're out there. You're recovering. So I googled this picture. You know, there's many different Mets for many different people out there on the internet. So here's one example. And now comparing this, the Mets per the big red textbook, but this is specifically for cardiac rehab. This is what I mean. There's multiple different Mets for multiple different purposes for multiple different ages. This is the one that's really important to remember as far as cardiac rehab is concerned. I also googled this picture. If you couldn't tell from the blurriness and the quality. This is the Borg versus the modified RPE. Don't ask me why. Borg starts at 6 and then they modified it and we still use both in the real world and in our MPTE studies. You're welcome to google any other picture than this one, but I prefer this one because it breaks down how the Borg and the modified are similar, like the six and the seven go with zero. And then I like that it has the breathing pattern and the percent max heart rate rate. But once again, you could Google, there's many charts out there, make your own, have at it. We have finally made it to the practice question portion of our video. So please take your time and answer the question.
Okay, the correct answer is C. How long after an MI does a patient have a high risk of a reoccurring MI? So I have no additional knowledge to lay on you other than that this is just straight memorization and knowing this for your patient's safety. Because in four to eight weeks, they're going to be into their phase two of cardiac rehab and you need to be checking their vitals and you need to know when to hold and stop exercise so you can make the appropriate response depending on the situation. Okay, the correct answer is D. What is the focus of phase one cardiac rehab? The correct answer is assess hemodynamic response and increase independence and functional mobility. I took this straight from the big red textbook that we all know and love. We do not want to keep them on bed rest because we know that promoting early ambulation is vital for these patients. Okay, the correct answer is C. What is the average expected discharge time frame from cardiac rehab for a patient status post coronary bypass? Well, referring back to my earlier slides, so for a coronary stent, expected discharge is one to two days, valve replacement is two to three days, coronary bypass is four to five days and a whole heart transplant is seven to ten days. Thank you again for joining us on Journey to 600. Please like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications so you know when we post another video.